Are you a fan of pro wrestling, comedy, and combat sports? Then we have the podcast for you because we cover that and much, much more. Do you like to debate with your friends? Do we have the perfect segment for you? It's the 531, where we take any given subject, break it down to a top five. From there, we debate it down to three and then into that number one spot. If you want to get a hold of us, find us on our social media. Search Working Fans Podcast on any major social media platform. And if you want to find the podcast, search for us on any major podcast platform as well as YouTube. Working Fans Podcast. We put in the work so you don't have to. It's the Working Fans Combat Cast, episode 26. We are going to preview UFC Fight Night 199 today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the pay-per-view last weekend, um, UFC 269, Oliveira Poirier, uh, Nunes Pena. We'll have a lot to say about that. And uh, Chevy, how you doing? Tell everybody what's up. Good. Uh, let's see. So coming up. The rest of the year, we have uh, Christmas Day. We're going to have our end of the year wrap up show. We're going to talk about all our favorite fights and uh, what we saw happening this year. And then the week after on New Year's Day, we're going to have a prediction show for what we see going forward in uh, 2022. Awesome. And um, I guess, you know, segue a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about stuff next week. Uh, you know, like, you know, maybe fight of the year, blah, blah. I think upset of the year is a great one to start with. Yeah. Out of Pena and um, let's just start with this one and then we'll talk about some other fights on this card because this is really the big news, I think. Um, I was scared. I didn't go all the way with it, but I, 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 I'm one of the few people. I gave Pena a shot. I said she was going to be a competitive mm-hmm. fight. You guys were so confident. It actually shook me a little bit. I'm like, all right, Dave, you're a dumbass. Stop. <laughs> you know, so truth behind the whole thing. Like, I was really kind of doubting. I just, as I think I was saying last week, um, there was that thing I was telling you guys about, like, when, you know, the upset always comes when you the person you least expect it. It's not the fight, you know, and it's also, like, I did like her stylistically. I did think her mental game was good. Um, what was interesting, though, I was listening to an interview she did with Hawani. And Hawani got some slack because uh, he was talking about that, you know, she's actually – and I didn't talk about her being a mom, too. We talked about Noons being a mom, but, you know, Noons had to go – she actually went through the whole birth and everything. And I think some people got mad, but Hawani's point was that she actually had a physical ordeal to her body and to come back and listen to her explain that. Had I known that, too, that might have actually even – I'm like, oh, okay, so she's really lucky to be where she's at because – that is such a traumatic thing for an athlete to go through. But um, other than that, no, she was very classy. Um, talked about what a great mom that the man it is. There was a video that came out of like their two kids hugging beforehand with Dustin's daughter as well in the background. And mm-hmm. he talked about what well, that, that just shows you that that kid is raised by a lot of love. And is gonna, so she was very respectful. And, you know, she did say that, you know, she knew she said the fight went like she kind of thought it would be. And she said, when her and Amanda were exchanging, she could feel heavy breathing, though, and she knew that, that was happening. I made a – I was joking. Um, when we were all together, I there was that smile Nunes had in between corners, and I said, oh, yeah, she looks nervous. I was kidding, but somebody actually made an analogy about that, that sometimes that could be like a nervous smile. Maybe she did feel that she was already getting tired. And um, anyway, as, we were, uh, as the fight was going on um, – I thought Nunez was going to catch her early on with a submission in round one. And I remember I was like disappointed. I'm like, come on, uh, you know, Pena, like, I, I talked you up. At least get make it to round three, like I said. Um, I did not see it playing out like that where they would just exchange punches. When I looked at Nunez, uh, I'm sorry, not Nunez, uh, Pena's record a little close, I noticed she had only had been uh, maybe TKO'd once. So she was never knocked out completely. And that was earlier in her career. So I did kind of wonder, I'm like, well, she might have a really good chin. And clearly she does. 
Mm. Um, but it was a very, uh, like, Nunez, maybe because she was tired, she just got into a slugfest, and uh, it really worked against her. Um, I thought that was the downfall, that and the cardio. And uh, maybe she didn't, so maybe she didn't prepare as much as she could. Not to say she's a world class athlete, but maybe, you know, and, and coming down in weight from, you know, her last fight and having these early knockouts. Um, I think it was the perfect storm. I, I will be curious to see how a rematch goes. I don't think we need to have that super turnaround quick, but maybe, you know, even by March or April wouldn't be bad. Um, what were your thoughts as that fight was going down? And now that it has happened. Uh, well, I'm full, full of humble pie from talking all that shit about Pena. So, uh, you know, fact of the matter is MMA. So no one should ever be a minus 1000 favorite because anything can happen in this sport. And as we saw on Saturday, it does. Um, I agree with pretty much everything you said. It, I think it was a perfect storm for Amanda. You know, maybe she she did look a little bit nervous coming out. You know, she wasn't all smiles. Um, she said after the fight that she just didn't feel like she, you know, had the fire. Or she didn't feel like she was there. You know, didn't want to be there. Um, cardio, though, that used to be an issue she used to struggle with a lot. And it had seemed in her most recent fights that she had rectified that issue, but clearly it reared its head in this fight. And I think that's ultimately what caused her to fight so poorly. She made, you know, a lot of dumb decisions. I thought just staying there striking with pain she could have backed up, you know, caught her breath a little bit, but she just stood in the pocket and was really hoping that that power would get her out of the fight quickly. And, you know, ultimately uh, Pena's, chin stood up to it so um amanda got tired and she got choked out so i think in the next fight you know amanda is world class her team is world class i I think they're gonna fix a lot of those mistakes obviously she will get up for the fight she i mean if she doesn't get up for the next one she should just retire so I don't, I would still put my money on Amanda for the next one, mm-hmm. but uh, I definitely won't be disrespecting Pena like I, like I was on our last episode for sure. I mean, and you know, we've been watching MMA. Um, I, I've been consistently watching it since the end of 2011. Um, you jumped on around 2015, 2016, yeah. off and on consistently the last few years. So, I mean, really, we've only known. Nunez as this force and there hasn't been anybody even close to touching her other than maybe Shevanko and she hasn't had like the, the finishes that Nunez has and that finish that Nunez had over Cyborg um, home Rousey I mean it's just all crushing stuff so it's real easy to see like why anyone would just think okay well this woman is going to retire undefeated oh not undefeated but you know no one's going to beat her again um, unless there's some force that comes up. Pena kind of flew under the radar. To her credit, she worked hard, I think, on not getting submitted. I think those are the things she really worked on with her team. That was the thing, I think, in her losses in the UFC. She was always caught by a submission. Um, I'm interested to see uh, how this fight goes down. Like you, I think um, if Nunez can get her cardio uh you know, up to snuff. I think we have an interesting fight here. Um, Cause obviously Pena has got a chin and she's not going to just get taken out and the exchange could come down on the ground. Could be that wrestling versus that jujitsu. And we know Pena can get submitted, but she also has some really good wrestling and appears to have the edge in cardio. Um, regardless, like even like if uh, Nunes takes, you know, uh, everything. I think Pena's going to have an edge in cardio. You know, wrestling have- wears on your cardio more than, uh, I mean, especially, you know, Amanda fancies herself a striker. So right. the grappling it will wear on her cardio more than the stand up would. So, right. So I, I do think she is a tough matchup. Um, I do think Nunes still has that power, though. Um, it'll just be coming out with the right game plan. 
Nuna's track record is so good. I find it hard not to still favor her, but um, it's going to be a lot closer in my mind this time. And um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And uh, I think it adds uh, excitement to this division. You know, like it's kind of what this division needed a little bit because as much as we love a man, like having that dominant champion, you kind of just go like, oh, okay. So you almost need it as a co-main event because you're like, well, we know what's going to happen here. Well, this will be fun. It's a nice little appetizer. Now the next time you get headline with that card and I'm in because it's like, mm-hmm. okay, here we go. Um, all right. I'll just throw some fights at you here. Um, if you want to talk about the other ones, you let me know. Um, I'll start off with a couple prelim fights that I thought were really on my radar. Ty to Avasa. Um, big KO on a four fight win streak. Really happy to see this guy. He is so charismatic. He's got the borrow at wrestling vernacular. He's over. The shoey is over. Like people are doing shoeys. Um, if you're the UFC, I just keep trying to give this guy some favorable matches and try to melt this for as long as you can. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I don't see him. I mean, it's heavyweight, so anything could happen, but I don't see him becoming champ, you know. I think of him more as like a black beast type character where, you know, he's just a fan favorite. He has exciting fights and he's exciting outside of the cage. I, you know, I I think he's a personality obviously. And um, yeah, I I agree with you. The UFC should give him favorable matchups. If if he gets to a title shot, that's great. If not pay him. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking down here as I prepare for the next one because uh, I didn't really prepare for this, but I'm looking at Cruz and Pedro Munoz. And one thing that pops in my head about this was great fight, first of all, fight at night. But I feel bad for Pedro Munoz at looking at his record here because he's lost like four out of his last five. He's on a two fight losing streak now. But the names are Sterling, Edgar, Aldo, Cruz. He arguably beat Edgar <laughs> and, you know, he beat Jimmy Rivera in a close fight. Like this guy, and Jimmy is, Rivera got cut after that, I think. Yeah. Did he? Okay. So, so, I mean, this is just, this is a murderer's row at Bantamweight division. Like he fought his ass off. Uh, I was really impressed with Cruz's striking in this. Um, obviously the, it was obviously a lot of it was set up with Dominic Cruz's fantastic, spectacular foot movement with the moving around and stuff. But, like, he showed, the, <coughs> excuse me, with the Faber fight a little bit, too, that um, he's so good at movement. When he hits you, like, he can hurt you. And you don't really think of Cruz as, like, a guy who can hurt you. But he can hurt you. And um, I thought this was definitely deserved to be fighting tonight. I feel bad for Pedro, but also I thought spectacular performance by Cruz, who even got caught. Really bad effort. Like they could have stopped this. Yeah, thing. he was hurt. He was hurt. Yeah. So um I'm excited. even thank the ref afterwards for not stopping it, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see. I'm hearing some talk that people would like to see Cruz versus Aldo next. I don't know um what you think. Ooh. I, I know. I it's a it's a tough fight because Aldo's looks so good and so dominant. Yeah. Maybe maybe we see Dom, you know, uh one step below below Aldo. You know, and then if he wins that one, then you put him back up there in, in the top. I think. Yeah. I know the guy's on a losing streak, but it could be interesting um, if he's still he's still fighting Frankie Edgar. Frankie uh, Edgar, a Marlon Marais or something like that, maybe. But you know, yeah. just that, just below that top tier. I think one more to put him up there. I just it, think- like. He was hurt. He was hurt very badly. He could have lost that fight. You know, if he had a different ref, it might have got stopped. So, um, I do think you're right, though. That he's not known for to be a power puncher, Dom, I'm talking about. Right. But it's the shots that you don't see coming that are the ones that can put you out, really. And he's he uses angles so well that he hits you and you don't see where it's coming from or you don't suspect it. I did like that Dominic was aggressive with a striking even after he got hurt you know he was putting some long combinations together and pressuring Pedro which is very dangerous so uh I'm I thought he looked great you know vintage Dom 
And uh, yeah, I want to see him back in there again quickly. Hopefully he doesn't have some injury. You know, he gets injured every fight, it seems like, and he's out for a year at a time. So he's getting older. I'd like to see him get back in there quickly, win one more. And then I think he's in that, you know, that top four or five guys again. Um, Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think Edgar would be a good fight. And um, obviously, yeah, maybe like you said, an older, you know, competitor. And Edgar... I mean, neither one of them really necessarily had the power. They're going to really hurt each other, but they both like the volume and they let, you know, like Frankie likes to keep coming, but he rocks back and forth. Yeah, he has good footwork also. Yeah, I think it'll be a great uh, style mashup. Just like, you know, if you want to watch like some good technical MMA, like uh, I'd like to see that fight. Um, the wrestling favor, could be good in that one also. Yeah, I would favor Dom, but it's a good matchup for Frankie too, who's had some bad knockouts. Like this could be something for Frankie maybe to, get himself back in there um, and we can see where he's at and we'll see where Dom's at after that. Um, and again, Frankie, even though I thought it was close and I thought maybe Munoz wanted to fight, Frankie did survive Pedro as well, got the win too. So, you yeah, know, we'll see. Um, Josh Emmett uh, with the win over Ige. Um, not a lot to say really here. Uh, Emmett's got that power. Um, I think Ige looked like he took round two, if I remember this fight correctly. Um, I, I did have Emmett winning, though. It was close. Uh, I just like to think, like, this featherweight division, what's up next with him? I think you were telling me off air, uh, Kate, Cater's got a fight coming up against... Um, Giga Chikese. Jay-Z, yeah. Maybe uh, Emmett can meet the winner of that. Um, that's something yeah. I'd like to see. Um, but I don't know if you want to add anything on that fight, but that was just I wanted to cover that, too, because it was the main event in the prelims. I thought that fight could have went either way. It was very close. So I, I didn't I wasn't upset that they gave it to Emmett, but I wouldn't have been upset if they gave it to Ige either. Yeah. It was a good fight. Yeah. Um and you know Emmett marches on. I'm curious to see what he does. He's a guy I like. Um good dude. Uh glad to see he's out there. Puts on exciting fights. So. his power, like he hits people so hard with mm -hmm. that like overhand right for for featherweight. He might be one of the hardest punchers at that weight division. Yeah, he has that knockout power. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at him now here. Like performance of the night, fight of the night one time. He was the West Coast Fighting Lightweight Championship. He's had some other um like regional titles, it looks like too. So mm -hmm. uh, um all right, let's get to the main card here. Um Sean O'Malley uh against this gentleman's name. I screwed up last week too, Marlene Padilla. Uh I mean O'Malley, uh sharp looking sharp man uh you know and i think dana said after this that the guy he was fighting he felt was like you know i know he came from the contender series he said he was the real deal and he says that o'malley is going to get a stiffer competition next which i think is i think now's the time you know if you are grooming this guy you had that one setback um and i think um let's see what he's got um he looks really good. Uh, I know he wants to make some money. I don't know how many more fights he has on his contract. And I did think Dana said he was going to uh, pay the man, too. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, his opponent was, I think, 21-3. and three, And he had performance bonuses in his fights in the UFC. So he was no slouch. Just I didn't really know about him um, going into the fight. But he, he was no slouch. I, th I think he was an alpha male guy. So it comes from a good camp. Now, as much as my wife would hate to hear it, and, and our friend Carney Asada would hate to hear it, Sean O'Malley is the real deal. I think you know, I, I don't know if he's a top level talent. We won't know that until he fights some top level guys. But he's uh he's handling the the guys that he's fighting right now um, with ease. So Rafael Asanko, uh, who's fighting this weekend against uh, Ricky Simon. Um, Ricky Simone, maybe. Simone, yep. Yeah. Um, Simone is not ranked right now. Very tough guy. I would not be surprised if Simone wins that fight. Asanko's 12. So he could fight the winner of that. I mean, it's literally a week apart. Um, I believe O'Malley's 13. He's right behind him. So that would, guy could be a good fight. However, with the hype behind this guy, too, just looking at these ratings, <laughs> uh, Man, do you want to match up with a Pedro Munoz? Like, if you're not – like, Pedro Munoz is probably so fired up right now. Um, it'd be an interesting one because Munoz might 
um, take his head off and kill your hype machine. But then again, if he outclasses Pedro Munoz too, despite that record, um, you know, then you got to start looking at it. Okay, here's a guy that arguably be Frankie, and Frankie's another guy. I mean, there's a there's a lot of good people you could match them up here with. Uh, Marlon Vera, um, Marlon Marais. Uh, well, he fought Marlon Vera already. Right? I wouldn't probably. Although I think Vera would take that rematch. Where's Garbrandt ranked at Bantamweight? I would not be surprised if the UFC gave uh, him Garbrandt because they think that's a winnable fight at this point in Cody's career, and it moves it moves Sean up the rankings. So well, obviously, uh, I'm it may at, have some heat. So yeah, I'm looking at the rankings now, um, and Cody's not on here probably because he went down to featherweight. So they probably I would imagine we see that fight next. It's two big names. Yeah. So, and with Cody's chin being a little suspect, um, yeah, I could see that. Maybe a fight night main event or, yeah, or on a pay-per-view again. They, yeah. they, they seem to like to put him on the main event of pay-per-views. We'll talk about Cody in a bit, too. Um, actually, that fight was uh, next, I believe, anyway. So, yeah, let's just segue into that a little bit, too, because uh, Cody gets knocked out by Kai Car France. Great performance by this kid. Um, but let's talk about Cody a little bit first. Um, you know, is his chin trash? Uh, he came back and he knocked out Asanka, who's not really a heavy hitter, but um, you know, he, he was did. landing good shots on Cody, though. He was right, and then he had that fight with Font that he lost, but he didn't get finished by Font, who we know is a hitter. So, I guess I'm wondering. Is it possible the weight cut cut was also part of the reason why maybe he got knocked out of this fight? Not to take anything away from Cargo, but we've seen that before where these guys suck weight and their chins kind of deteriorate. I think it was a combination of that. <clears throat> you know, it might just be even at Bantam weight, he didn't have great weight cuts in the one in the fights that he got knocked out in those. Um we didn't get to see the fight long enough to see what Cody really looked like at 125. I think that Kai Car France is just a great fighter. And yeah. He's a tough matchup, you know, tough to come down to. In your I know they they wanted it to be a one and then a title shot for Cody cuz he has a name, but they I obviously that wasn't the right choice. They should have gave him someone a little bit easier, I think. Mm -hmm. Um I don't. I don't know what happens to Cody. I think I read he's one in five, or he's one one in his last five. Yeah. You know, we just saw Kevin Lee get cut for you know he lost five out of his last seven. So. But Cody makes more money too. Yeah. So you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility possibility that we see Cody get cut. Um, I I hope not. Sucks, you know. I like the I like the guy. I'd like to see him come back, and yeah, it's just amazing that a few years ago mm. he dominated Dominic Cruz, like absolutely right. destroyed Dominic Cruz, and you know that was the best he ever looked in any of the fights leading up to that or since. But if he could manage to get that Cody Garbrandt to show up to fight night, he would be unstoppable. But I don't know. Is his chin gone? It's hard to tell. It definitely looks diminished in some capacity, sure. but hopefully they don't cut him. I don't know what's next for him. I I think maybe it goes back to 135, maybe change it. Some, he's got to figure something out. Training camp, you know, something. O'Malley probably does make sense, though. There is a name, and there's some um, O'Malley, from a business standpoint, did put the heat on that fight. And it's probably a winnable fight, and you're protecting the kid, and you're probably sacrificing Cody at this point. Oh, yeah. He sees the uh, – that'll see him right out the door if he loses that one for sure. Yeah, especially if he gets finished. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which if he's going to lose that fight, he's going to get finished, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think he either wins or gets finished probably just the way those two styles are. Because if he wins, it's probably a situation where Cody came in with a right game plan, wrestling. and Wrestling. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I, I don't think we haven't seen O'Malley off his back enough. You know, I think people need to try to put him on his back. I know it's hard because he has such good range and he's accurate, but I think that's the next he needs to see a, somebody that can put him on his back. Uh, and just for Kai Car France next, 
Uh, I know he's calling out a title shot. Um, maybe Alex Andre Pantasia. Pantaj. Pantania. Pantanio. Pantania. Yeah. He's one of the, like he's in the top like two. He's mm-hmm. like he's right there. Um, and I know he's beaten Brandon Royal, who has caught uh Kai Car France before too. So that's like the top. Guys, it's like Kai Car France, Brendan Royal, uh, Alexander, and um, then of course, uh, Brendan Moreno, the champ, and um, Figueredo. Yeah, so uh, Kai Car France has got to be either next in line or he's in a title eliminator. Next. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, a great division. Um, you know, I not enough spotlight on it. You know, we're learning some of these guys, but it's like every time, like the, the cream of the crop of that division, it's always exciting, exciting fights. Yeah. Yeah, the the top ten are they're all close in in skill, so it makes all those fights exciting. Yeah, uh, Jeff Neal, uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio. I won't say a lot about this. It wasn't um, at this point. It was getting a little late, and we were getting ready to move on. Uh, it wasn't a bad fight. I think we were just getting a little like impatient. And we're like, we're too many old. complaining about eye pokes and yeah. whatever that really slows the fight down. And yeah, it was getting late. It was a very mm-hmm. close fight could have went either way as far as i was concerned for that one as well yeah welterweight jeff neal gets to win um which we'll he see. needed he did he did so we'll see what's next for him i don't think we necessarily got to push this like he's not going to get a huge fight or anything but uh we'll see what happens um he does have one over Bill muhammad who's fighting in the coming event this weekend yep. so uh neal is i think capable of great things um so we'll see what happens um all right uh, we discussed the co-main event already. We don't need to go back to that. So let's just get to the main event. Uh, Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier. As much as I picked Poirier last week, I told you the night of that, I was just like, man, the more I think about it, I just got this feeling. Just like I did about the other one, I was like, like, I don't think Dustin can get it done. And it just it broke my heart. I didn't want to believe because I nothing against Oliveira, Charles. It's just Dustin really, I wanted him to get that moment before he retires. I know he's not necessarily going to retire anything yet, but I know it's so hard at this point with all the fights he's had. Um, it's so jammed pack up to get another title shot is hard. Yeah. Uh, that being said, um, you know, uh, he made the right decision by fighting Connor and getting the money for his family and doing all that mm-hmm. stuff. So good on him. He put, uh, you know, notoriety to his name. Um, Charles in another great fight too. Um, he's an exciting fighter. Um, he's excited. He's a finisher. He's a finisher. He takes risk. Um, absolutely amazing. Like his last two performances, winning the title and his title events, like he almost, you know, especially in the one with um, Chandler, but even here, like he got caught a couple times and it's just tremendous. Uh, before that, he dominated Tony Ferguson. Um, he choked out Kevin Lee. I'm just looking at this guy like, oh my God, look at this. Like Jared Gordon, Nick Lentz, David Tamer, Jim Merrow. Um, this goes on and on. Um, yeah. Uh, what's next for Charles? Uh, Justin Gaethje, right? Yep. I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah. I don't know. Nothing's been officially announced, but UFC posted a video of Gaethje, you know, congratulating Charles and telling him how much respect he has for him and all that. I assume that that fight is next. Um, to talk about the fight, though, I... If Dustin was going to get finished, that's how it was going to be with Charles, you know, slipping onto his back and choking him out. Uh, I, I did not expect Charles to hurt Dustin early the way that he did. Those body shots from from the uh, Muay Thai plum position mm. where he's cranking his neck down. He landed some heavy body shots, and you could tell Dustin was tired. He was looking over at the clock. You know, he was breathing real heavy, and I think that, that made, put a big – um put a big dent in in dustin so i think he was hurt that he was tired at second round he he didn't try to get up he just tried to hold on when he was on the ground and right there you could tell that that's not the mentality of a champion you know he was too worried giving charles too much respect to finish him you know dustin's a great grappler in his own right you know he should be a world champion he should try to fight up in that position as you know what do i know i'm, I'm sitting in a chair you know he's in the octagon but uh from what i've seen I, I don't think he's incapable of getting up in that position and he had already hurt charles 
twice. So I thought he should have tried to get up. I know he was tired. All credit to Oliveira. Um, I, I can't wait for the Gaethje fight. I think that's an excellent matchup. I agree. Um, and maybe for Poirier, if he's going to stick around and we're not going to do another Connor, let's say, I think Chanwer is right there as well. Both coming off losses. Um, and I know uh, Islam Makovic, uh, Islam Makovic, he has to be around this conversation at some point too. Well, maybe he's fighting Dariush. So I was going to say, okay, let's get through Dariush first. Yeah, Dariush is. No, no slouch. Darius no, wins. Darius, He's next in line for a title shot too. I think. Uh, yeah, honestly, the winner of that fight would probably deserve to fight the winner of Gaethje Oliveira. So, yeah. and I, I think people Darius are sleeping there. on Darius. I think he has a very good chance of of getting this win over Makachev. He's another guy like Oliveira who he lost some fights here and there, but he's just gotten better and better, like a Poirier back in the yep. day. You know, yep. Yeah, some of these guys they just keep busting up. Not a Pena, a great example. Somebody's pulled off the radar a little bit, but just people you know, who take their losses, but they're mentally strong and they keep – that's one of the great things I think about the mental game of MMA is that if you start watching this for a while, you'll see the hardships of some of these fighters and you'll see who some of these people, like they come back. And uh, mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite aspects of MMA is just knowing that, like, you know, you can never count certain people out. And so – That's right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely good. That's – all right, let's get to this weekend's card. Uh, Derek Lewis, Black Beast, uh, Chris Dacos. Dacos, uh, yep. Dacos. Uh, so 31 KOs combined. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, – uh, you had a couple early prelim fights you wanted to – Yeah, so it's a uh, couple fights to look out for. Jordan Levitt is on the, I think he's the first fight of the prelims, but he's the uh, fighter. I can't remember who he was fighting now, but I just remember he picked up his opponent, was mm-hmm. carrying him, carried him over to his corner and slammed him down and ended up knocking him out. Um, that was, a, I think he came off the contender series as well. So, but I remember that was an exciting fight. Um, Raquel Pennington is fighting Macy Ch- uh, Chieson. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I actually saw, I mean, the internet said this. I don't know if it's right or not, mm-hmm. but it, it said that the fight was at featherweight, even though they're both bantamweights, they're ranked bantamweights. So I, I think that might just be an error. Well, I can't see why they would be fighting at featherweight. Right. That division only exists so that Amanda can have two belts, as far as I know. Yeah, maybe so, a weight thing. Um, yeah, but it's, it it's, seems pretty early for them to, I don't know. I, it could happen, I guess, but. I see you, Raquel, winning that one by decision just based on, uh, you know, level of competition. I think that'll be a pretty close fight, though. Um, Matt Sales is the guy that's fighting Jordan Levitt, by the way, too. Matt Sales, yeah. Yeah, also from the Contender Series. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is coming off a loss to Bryson Mitchell. He got caught in that twister. And uh, he's definitely – he's won a few, lost a few here. Like, he lost his USA debut, then he won, and now he lost. And so – We'll see how this goes. Um, uh, main, uh, well, main card, first fight on there. Cubs, Swanson, and Darren Elkins. Talk about some OGs that are going to go at it. I love me some Cubs, Swanson, but Elkins is one of those guys that if you ever watch him, he can just take a beating and you can never count him out. He's got that. Oh, that his too. nickname is Damage. damage. Yeah. damage he and it says on his chest, yeah. Yeah. That's. I think that's ultimately going to be what this fight comes down to: who can absorb the most damage. So, I think uh, Cub has a little more tools on the feet uh, with the striking game. Technically, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think Elkins is really the kind of guy that's going to knock him down. I think Cub is great in the scramble. Stylistically, I like this as a three-round fight for Cub. A five-round fight, maybe a little trickier because Elkins is so good at coming durable. back. Right, so durable. Uh, I like Cub. I'm going to say decision. Wouldn't be surprised in these scrambles if Cub maybe catches him with a choke or something. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to fade, but I uh, Elkins is a hard guy to put away too. So I'm saying Cub by uh, decision here. I'm going to say Elkins mm-hmm. by decision. Just you know, he. I think he's just going to land the heavier shots on Cub. Hmm. Let's we'll see. Uh, 
Carlos Figueroa is a name. Carlos Diego Figueroa is a name I'm familiar with. Uh, he has a win early in his career over Darius, I believe. Oh no, he got he lost to Darius actually. Um, yeah, I recognize some of these people. We like Rustam Kabalov, Anthony Pettis. Like uh, he's got some wins. Uh, I don't know much about this guy's fighting, but he apparently looks like the prospect here. Uh, Muchus Garmat. Um, he's one of those, looks like KSW guys out in the European scene. Um, also, he's got a performance of the night twice already against Holtzman and Stevens. Fight of the night one time. Fastest submission uh, by Kimura against Stevens in 65 seconds. Yeah, all right. This guy's got a ton of grappling. All right, I'm going to go with him. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with him too. <laughs> you know, if you can submit Jeremy Stevens in 40 seconds or whatever. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, Rafael Sanko, Ricky uh, Sanko, Ricky Simone, we talked a little bit about before. Um, Sanko's the favorite, uh, but this guy's been around for a while. Um, and he got caught by Cody in his last fight. And, uh, you know, he used to be a durable guy. Like earlier in his career, he had a decision went over TJ Dillashaw. Um, he's got like a trick. TJ got that fight back, though. He, he, he beat him he after did. that. Yeah. He did. I know you want to get that in there. He did. <laughs> I, I know it too. I'm, 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 I love DJ. Um, I don't know. People are like, oh, bless me. <laughs> I <love it>. Great. <laughs> uh, so I think, uh, but I, I think Ricky Simone has got some underrated power. He comes to fight, and I think this might be a breakout moment for him. Um, I don't know who's the favorite here. I know Asanko's got him in the rankings, uh, but I, I like Ricky Simone. I say by decision, or maybe he even catches him. Uh, Asuncao has beat a lot of the top level guys. Like TJ, you said he beat Rob Font, he beat Munoz. Um, but he lost to him split a couple. Yep. Yep. But he lost his last three. Right. Um, you know, Cody knocked him out with that, you know, leaning on the cage and at the bell hit him sort of thing. I I thought he was doing pretty well in that fight, but ended up getting knocked out. But uh, Ricky Simone has won his last three. He has a win over Marab, which we're a big fan of. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but it was that one where oh. they said Marab was unconscious, even though he was still moving at, when the whistle went. So right. I don't know if you really want to count that one. I thought that was bullshit, but yeah, um, his wrestling's good. His, his footwork's pretty good and unorthodox. I, I think I'm going to go with Ricky Simone by decision. I think that'll be a that might be fight of the night, though. I think those guys are going to beat each other up. That's good. I, um, I'm looking at the next one. Andrew Hill versus Amanda Lemos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amanda Lemos is, uh, looks like she is. 10 and 1. She's 10 and 1, but 4 and 1 in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, she lost her first fight to Leslie Smith by TKO. But after that, she, she debuted at Strawweight. So, yeah, she's undefeated at Strawweight, it looks like, here in the UFC. Um, she got a rear naked choke, then she won by decision, then TKO, and then TKO. Um, so and she's uh, yeah, she's been a couple of regional championships, jungle fight. Andrew Hill, though, man, she's been around and she's had a lot, a lot of fights, so active. Um, the thing with Hill is she always like wins one, loses one sometimes. Uh, she's had a lot of fights where maybe she shouldn't have lost. Um, She's a gamer. She's a gamer. She knows how to win. Um, I'll say Hill gets it done. I think the experience in big fights will be the advantage here. I think that you're right. I, I think Hill's losses usually come with someone that will grapples her, or clinches her up against the cage, and she can't deal with that. I don't think this girl's going to do that. I think mm-hmm. this is just going to be a stand-up battle, and I think that Angela Hill, that favors Angela Hill, and she gets a late TKO. Okay. Um, so we got Bill Muhammad versus Steven Wonderboy Thompson in the co-main event. Really like this fight. Really potential fireworks. Um, Muhammad's last loss was to Jeff Neal. Uh, that was January 19th, 2019. He goes on to beat Curtis uh, Millinder, uh, Takase Sato, Lyman Good, Diego Lima. Uh, then he had the no contest with Leon Edwards. Yeah, I poke. Yeah, a really bad eye poke. He beats Damian Maya by decision. This guy is basically 
on a five fight win streak. He grappled with Maya too. He, you know, yeah. he ha- he wrestled him too. So it wasn't like he just jabbed him and stayed away from him. He was in his face the whole time. Didn't get love choked me, out. Love me some Wonder Boy Thompson who does have a victory over Neil. MMA math doesn't always add up, folks. Um, Muhammad is on quite the win streak and he's very versatile and Wonderboy I think has some mileage on him right now. I hope I'm wrong. Love me some Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I like me some Bill Muhammad in here, I think by decision. But well, you can never count out Wonderboy. Maybe it's been kicking. Maybe you see this fight going differently, but I'm just saying either way you can't count him out, but I favor Muhammad in here. Get it done. So I'm really high on uh, Bilal. I- yeah. You know, I think he could be a dark horse in the division. Mm. Um, but I think Wonder Boy is his worst matchup. Okay. Um, I think if Wonder Boy wins, it's going to be like by some head kick KO. Yeah. If he can, you know, use his front leg, you know, Rogan's always talking about his front leg and how he uses that side kick as like a jab. Mm-hmm. Um, if he can keep Bilal from clinching with him and taking him down. I mean, Bilal has nothing to offer stand-up wise with Wonder Boy, so um, I think that's his going to be his game plan. Keep him at distance, uh, maybe try to tire him out while Bilal's chasing him around. Although Bilal has great cardio, but you know, and just catch him with something because that's what he's known for doing: catching high-level people with something. I think he just you know throws a sneaky head kick over his shoulder. And uh, knocks him out if he's going to win. If not, if he can't keep him off him, it's going to be a boring decision. Mm-hmm. Bilal's going to hold him up against the cage and stay safe and, you know, beat him up or take him down. Wonder Boy gets up. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with Wonder Boy by knockout. But I do love Bilal. I, I think he will be champ. I do think you bring up a certain point about the style too, because Wonder Boy does typically have some good takedown defense. Mm-hmm. So if you're keeping it standing, that is something that favors him. Um, three rounds though is a different thing, so he doesn't have as long to pull that off and get that done though. That's true. We'll see. Um, all right, main event: Chris Dukakis, Black Beast. Uh, Black Beast is always the guy who's the knockout artist. That he's got the most feared power in the division. But man, Dukakis comes in here on a All, fight win streak, four fight win streak in the UFC, three finishes and three performance bonuses in a row, and uh, he gets the big main event spot. Man, um, I'll let you start this one. I Go think back. all of his fights basically have ended by knockout. Like he yeah. either gets knocked out or knocks someone out. Um, I don't think he has any decisions. Early in his career. Okay, I'm looking at it now. KO. He has one submission loss. Okay. Uh, and a TKO. Well, you don't have to worry about that with Black Beast. No, you're not going to have to worry about that. Other than that, yeah. um, he's got one decision in his career. Okay, well. That, that would have been early. I'm going to assume this fight does not go to decision. Probably right. S- someone's going to get knocked out. Um, if you're going to stand and bang with the Black Beast, you're probably going to sleep. Mm. Uh, although. It's a dangerous game to play because Chris Dukakis Christo- is the real deal, I think. Um, in a few years, he might be heavyweight champ too. So um, I think this might be a little bit too much too soon for him as far as UFC fights go. And I'm going to say Black Beast round two knockout. If One it goes th- past round two, I'm favoring Chris, D- Chris Dukakis. One thing about Chris, he's got a brother that fights in the UFC we talked about. Before. Kyle. Yep. And he's actually has been a Philadelphia Police Department officer since 2010, mm-hmm. according to Wikipedia. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> but I believe I heard that somewhere else. He's a tough, tough guy. Tough guy. Um, and uh, I think the key for him is going to be footwork. Um, he's going to have to avoid footwork, maybe clinch. And, you know, but I, he's got the power to put away black beasts, but he needs to be careful about not getting caught. Um all right, just to be a little different, because I think we've agreed on a lot of stuff, I will go with Dukakis, TKO, round three. think so. It could happen. Heavyweight fight. They could double knock each other out with the first oh my God. shots, you know? That'd be some shit to see. All right, well, we talked a lot about fighting today. Um, we really did enjoy UFC 269, so it was easy. Um, this is a pretty good 
actually fight night card in terms of fight nights for what we've been getting lately. Like there's some mm-hmm. few notable names. I'm excited about that. Um, but we do have to cover one thing. Uh, <laughs> one other thing. Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley this week. I'm not going to – I don't have a lot to say. You can add a little more to this. I'm just going to pick – I think Woodley gets it done this time. I think there's um, – he has nothing to lose, and I think he's going to come out and he's going to finish this game. Right. I, I saw that Woodley said he watched the fight back, the first one, and saw – the spots where he hurt Jake and didn't capitalize on it. He said he, or I heard that he was, you know, saw what happened to Ben Askren and what happened to Nate Robinson. And he didn't want to get knocked out by Jake Paul. Um, You know, like you said, doesn't have that much to lose. Now he's already lost to the man. So uh, Jake put an extra half a million dollar clause that, if Woodley knocks Jake out, he gets an, an extra half a million dollars in his purse. I think that is all the motivation that Tyron will need mm. to come forward and knock out Jake Paul. And uh, that's what I see happening. Yeah. And if that happens, that might end the social experiment known as the Paul brothers, at least Jake's. I don't think so. I think he right fights right. again, even if he gets knocked out. Keep riding this out. Yeah. That's interesting. That's just what these guys came up out of nowhere. And then now, in terms of yeah. combat sports. Yeah. yeah. All the power to them. Yeah. All right. Uh, once you hit people one more time, what we got coming up. And- all right. So it's Christmas Day. We're going to do our end of the year wrap up show. We're going to talk all about all our favorite fights and uh, our favorite parts of the year. And then the next week on New Year's Day, we're going to have our prediction show for 2022. All right. So uh, until next time, guys, enjoy the fights.